Hey nerds, and welcome to Flash Theories and Conspiracies. I'm Brian from Good Nerd Bad Nerd. So this week on Flash, we had kind of the culmination of a lot of things that we had been building towards, and we also got a kind of uh, an iconic DC villain that was just kind of a throwaway. So there's a lot to talk about, but first uh, let's talk about the villain, Shade. Now, Shade's real name is Richard Swift, and there, he has two kind of origins, depending on if we are pre-zero hour, post-zero hour. There's lots of these kind of big DC crossover events that change the timeline. It's kind of just what DC did, but pre-zero hour, he was just kind of a regular criminal, a re regular thief that invented this cane that gave him these kind of shadow manipulation abilities. If you're familiar with Justice League and Justice League Unlimited. He's appeared there with the kind of uh, Legion of Doom teams. And that's more the version that we see um, in that pre-Zero Hour uh, character. Now post-Zero Hour, and this is the one that I think we, we see more on the show, this is a character who is, his powers are innate. They're just in him. They're not uh, because of his special cane. Now what's not true to the show, at least we don't know, is this version of Richard Swift is actually immortal. Um, he can't die, Even he's even had his heart ripped out and it didn't kill him. Um, but all of that to be said, all of his powers kind of come from his ability to manipulate shadows and darkness, including teleportation, force fields, energy projection. He can summon demons and he summons them from kind of this dark dimension or this dark world, and it's through that dimension and world that he teleports through. Um, so he is a very powerful individual in this kind of post-zero hour form. Um, it's also rumored that uh, the character of Dorian Gray is based off of him. Um, not in real life, obviously, but in the uh, his history as an immortal and you know just coming up through the ages. Uh, so he's he's got a really interesting history and it's a shame that he's really just a throwaway this char character this week. But next, H.R. Wells told us the name of his partner back on Earth-19, this Randolph Morgan. And I gotta be honest, I think it's, uh, I think he made it up. I don't think that's actually the name of his partner. I think we still have yet to learn truly who his partner is. I think his partner's just gonna show up one day because he's like, okay, HR, you need to come back. Um, but we still don't know who it is. My money right now is honestly on someone like Cisco. I think that would be uh, just a nice uh, shout out to Cisco was always kind of an inventor. He's always brilliant. He's always this genius. And again, the, the Randolph Morgan, it's, there's no one in the DC universe that I could find named Randolph Morgan. So I just, I don't think that's really who his uh, business partner is. Now that could be said, it could be someone we don't know and that it just the identity of that character is irrelevant, but I don't think that's the case. Um, moving forward, we finally uh, get to this culmination where Wally's going to get his powers and he gets cocooned and we will see what happens because he just gets his powers from touching that kind of alchemy stone but instead of being zapped. So we'll see how that happens. We'll see if he, if he is kind of under the sway of alchemy at all or if he is going to be his own man because it would be great to be actually have Kid Flash on the show helping Barry and, you know, Proving, uh, proving Joe wrong that he is uh, not going to be reckless with the powers. And that takes us to the last thing from the episode, Savitar. Now, Savitar was a uh, fighter pilot during the Cold War um, when he got struck by lightning. And he named himself, himself after the Hindu god of motion, Savitar. And he basically has all the same powers as all the other speedsters, but he has a few other ones. He can... Um, create uh, inertia dampening force fields. He can uh, imbue speed and kinetic energy onto objects or other people, and he can actually heal himself basically uh, instantly. Um, that's just kind of the use of his speed force. He's obsessed with the speed force, and that's kind of what he wants is to be a part of it. And in order to do that in the comics, he attempts to steal the speed force from every other speedster he can find. Now, it should be pointed out, he doesn't actually battle Barry in the comics. He's more related to, uh, you know, Max Mercury, Jesse Quick, um, Wally West, the, the rest of the speedsters, but Barry never actually did battle with him. So the fact that Wally West is getting his powers now, I think, is going to be important. 
What did you guys think of the episode? We are so close to learning who alchemy is. I'm sure I'm pretty sure we get to learn next week before we jump into the invasion four part crossover. That starts Monday, November 28th with Supergirl. So make sure not to miss it and make sure to stay here. I'll probably do a big one episode theory and conspiracy for all of it, covering all four episodes. But until then, guys, uh, this has been Brian from Good Nerd, Bad Nerd, and this has been Flash, Theories and Conspiracies. <laughs>